Ignore other people's opinions about healing. Ignore other people's opinions about healing. It's hard enough to heal from adrenal fatigue under the best of circumstances, but I'm gonna tell you the six obstacles to reversing adrenal fatigue that get my patients in trouble most often and make it even harder. Most of my patients have been suffering from adrenal fatigue for years, sometimes even decades before they find me. They all share this common desire to get their life back by healing adrenal fatigue and its symptoms as fast as possible. Now we've all been promised quick fix solutions uh, through clever marketing, but like me, you've probably learned through personal experimentation that quick fix aren't a successful long-term solution. I wish that there were a trick that would turn years worth of wear and tear around overnight. The reality is that it takes time to attain lasting healing. My predecessor, Dr. Posnecker would say, our patients want miracles and we give them miracles, they're just slow ones. The healing process is incremental and gradual, but more importantly, it is completely possible and lasting and avoiding these six obstacles to healing help patients get back on track and stay on track. Number one, slow down the hurry up and heal cycle. New patients are often eager to dive straight into healing and who could blame them? After years of seeking answers, it's exciting to have you know, some restored hope and a step-by-step -step roadmap to healing. And, and this excitement can easily turn into feeling uh, like a complete life overhaul has to be done immediately. And, that, and that's simply not the case. In my 20 years of clinical experience, I have yet to find a patient with this condition that isn't somewhat sensitive. Because of this sensitivity, making simple, single changes are a key. So my first rule is start low, and go slow. It may sound counterintuitive, but it's more efficient than adding too much too fast, potentially having a reaction, backing off, and having to start over again. Being a bit scientific as you move through the process definitely helps. Research scientists work to control as many variables as possible so that they can pinpoint cause and effect. And that's exactly what we have to do while we're building a protocol so that you can heal. Make one change at a time. Too many changes all at once, and you don't know what works, you don't know what doesn't. And this is true for anything. It could be diet, it could be sleep, it could be movement, supplements, vitamins, exercise. I often encourage slowing down in order to speed up the healing of the genome fatigue. Number two, shake off worrying about healing adrenal fatigue. Now, telling a person who has adrenal fatigue not to worry is literally like telling a person with tuberculosis not to cough. It is inherent in the condition. Over time, adrenal fatigue patients become wired to worry. That fight or flight physiology becomes so trigger happy and stuck in the on position. And now that's meant to be a form of protection, but it's a protective response that's really gone haywire. The physiologic reason for the excessive fear and worry by most adrenal fatigue patients is due to too much stress hormone over time and kind of a jacked up limbic system. Now, in order to bring that physiology back in balance, we have to effectively rewire that stress response system. This eventually stops that vicious worry. Of course, more worry leads to more stress hormone, which leads to more worry. So one of the facets of my healing protocol is to stop that cycle. I teach patients how to rewire their limbic system and calm their stress response. And these four measures can be easily incorporated into everybody's routine. Reassess your worries, write them down, and let go of whatever is out of your control. Get out of your head as much as possible. Disconnect and reconnect with nature. Go outside, go for a walk, go to a park or a beach if you're lucky enough to be close enough and then grounding exercises. Get your bare feet on the earth, or better yet, in the dirt. When done consistently, these simple small steps can reap huge benefits for bal balancing your, your overall phy physiology and healing adrenal fatigue. Number three, stop chasing and treating only the symptoms. Years of treatment by well-intentioned, yet maybe misinformed practitioners, as well as opinions on the internet, have created healing setbacks for so many of my patients. As I'm sure you already know, the internet uh, can be wonderfully useful as a research tool, but it also can become an echo chamber for bad advice. My patients have wasted years chasing after the individual symptoms and the secondary conditions because they've been told repeatedly that these are the problem, or this or that is the cause. 
thyroid disorders, digestive issues, malabsorption, leaky gut, candida, all the immune problems, allergies, and histamine, Epstein-Barr, Lyme, toxic overload, insomnia, hormone imbalances, these are not the root cause of all your problems. These are dysfunctions and symptoms that are simply the product of a deeper issue. Your adrenal fatigue is making you susceptible to those issues. Out of desperation to heal, many of my patients have become their own research uh, researcher. I know I did. It ended up on this uh, merry-go-round of specialists. This leads us to experiment with cleanses and detox and supplements and diets and numerous other healing therapies. And while some of these recommendations can give us transient relief, they keep us focusing on treating the symptoms. These secondary issues will never resolve if the root cause of those symptoms is not addressed. Now, by shifting your physiology back into balance, that cascade of symptoms and secondary conditions naturally dissipates without having to treat, eat, treat each one of those separately. Which leads to number four, don't use energy that is fleeting. At the first glimpse of returned energy is human nature for patients to push their boundaries and wanna make up for lost time, which often results in a crash. And crashes are discouraging, but with the right amount of pacing, those crashes can be avoided. So I tell my patients, whether they're feeling good or bad at this moment, don't get used to it because it's bound to change. Eventually, patients develop a bit of a reserve of reliable energy, but until then, I ask them all to resist the urge to do more, to live more during those moments they feel better. And I know that's not an easy request, but when they accomplish this, they build up this energetic bank account that gives them the eventual surplus of energy that you can use to build and live a healthy life. And as that healing process progresses, the good days eventually outweigh the bad ones until the bad days are just incrementally phased out. Number five, release the idea of perfection. The majority of my patients are cut from the same cloth, sharing similar personality traits. And, and I call these traits because these qualities can be controlled. Being overly caring or sensitive, overachieving, perfectionist, these are the norm. But fortunately, being perfect isn't necessary to heal this condition. And in most cases, the need to tackle everything perfectly can actually hinder healing. Let go of perfection, leave the dishes in the sink, ask for help, say no, even if you think it makes you look bad or lazy. Which brings me to the sixth obstacle, ignore other people's opinions about healing. Sharing your pain and discomfort and mental anguish to friends and families, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. You want them to understand, you want them to get it, maybe even to help, but instead, they typically make things worse with unsolicited advice. They like to chime in, tell you how to eat, which medication to take, the path you should choose, or how to think. They'll say, you know, be positive, or you need to exercise. These suggestions often, they, they come from a place of caring, but they don't want you to be suffering. But even well-intentioned advice doesn't mean well-informed advice. Everybody has a bias on based on their personal experience, and, and that bias creates opinions, and in turn, advice. And I have a bias too. My bias is based on my medical education, naturopathic philosophy, continued research, and varying levels of experience with all of these issues, both personally and with patients over the past 20 plus years. People close to my patients will often ask them, so are you better yet? And what those people don't understand is that better takes time, but healing starts right away. So maybe the best answer to this question is I'm getting there little by little. What my patients come to know is that I am incrementally leading them on the path towards lasting health. They finally understand what this condition truly is, why it's developed in them, and most importantly, how to live, think, eat, and move so that it eventually becomes a thing of the past. And knowing this becomes their power and their strength.